Yeah, we used to have flyers.
Good morning and welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Let us prepare to be blessed. Let us be open to grace and to praise God. Our intentions for this Mass are the eternal rest of Bernardo Fick Nguyen, Mark Hun Nguyen, and Joseph Kanvang Dong. The Altar Society will meet Tuesday, April the 16th at 6 p.m. for prayer, business meeting, and refreshments. The Knights of Columbus will hold a business meeting on Wednesday, April the 17th at 7.30 p.m. in Sacred Heart High School. The meeting is open to any council member wishing to attend. Volunteers are needed for food, set up, serving, or cleaning for the First Communion and Confirmation retreats. Contact Julia Starrett if you are available to help. Our Hispanic brothers and sisters will have a food sale following all Sunday Masses next weekend. Come and enjoy a wonderful meal. If you contributed to the Easter flowers, you're more than welcome to take an Easter lily home today located near the doors. Please do not remove any plants from the altar. The flowers on the altar were donated by the Sanchez children in memory of Patricia Sanchez. Praise God with joy, all you lands. Sing the praises for his name. Give him great honor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. With these words, the Mother Church begins today's Eucharist. Beloved in Christ the Lord, today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Easter. We can recognize it by the whiteness of the liturgical vestments, the joyful alleluia, the singing of glory to God in the highest, and above all, the lit paschal candle. We rejoice in the joy of the apostles who met and recognized the Lord in the, break, in the breaking of bread. Let us ask God for mercy for us through Jesus Christ, the only mediator and the righteous one. Please stand. Our gathering hymn is number 179 at the Lamb's High Feast, number 179. Please join us in singing.
Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Dear brothers and sisters, at the beginning of our Mass, let us acknowledge our sins first and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in your new youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. We invite our children. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm 
gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one. You asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he announced beforehand. Through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does commit sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Lord. Almighty God be on your heart and on your lips, so you can praise the gospel worthy and well through Christ our Lord. And away for your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and happy Easter. Good morning. It's hard to believe that it's already the third Sunday of Easter. Are you all still filled with the joy and hope that we have with Easter? Yes, Deacon. Now let me ask you a question and give me an audible response if you don't mind. Do you believe that Jesus was actually resurrected from the dead? All right, pretty good. Sounds good. I thought y'all might have had a late night last night and be a little sleepy this morning, but <laughs> yes, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. But what we see today in our scriptures is something that not only the disciples struggle with, but we struggle with today. It's the intersection of the supernatural realm, the supernatural world of heaven and the spirit with the natural realm that we have here on earth and in this church today. And so sometimes when things happen outside or that appear to be supernatural, we don't know what to think of it. And so that's what we see in our gospel today. It's almost as if we are living a Doctor Strange movie or maybe a DC multiverse kind of universe. And we scratch our head trying to figure things out. And being that we are in this natural realm, we try to understand things using the laws of nature, natural law. And we have to prove it. And if we can't prove it, then we don't believe it. So if we're struggling with, was Jesus truly resurrected from the dead? we might start by looking at some of the historical documents that would prove whether or not Jesus was real. And so you might go to Josephus, a Jewish historian that the Romans had writing to make an account of everything. And in there he wrote about this person, Jesus, who was really a person. And he wrote about this Jesus who was crucified. He was really crucified. Or you can go to the Roman works in laws. Romans, the Catholic Church got some of their um, keeping data and records from the Romans because they had records about everything. And you can find in their records that there was a person named Jesus and that he was crucified. But we come to the thing that scratches our heads sometimes that empty tomb. And that's where we can't understand this mystery. And that's exactly what it is. Because God created us and God created time, God is outside of time. God can come and go in time as God wants to. God's not bound by time like we are. We're going to die and our bodies are going to decay. That's just part of time and where we are. But we have a soul, and that soul is spirit, and that soul continues to live on. It doesn't die. And so we have to try to understand this intersection of the supernatural with the natural. And so if we are trying to prove that Jesus was resurrected, then if we don't believe based on those other two things that end in the empty tomb, then we might turn to the Bible. And the scripture, as Jesus said, points everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus and how he fulfilled everything in the Old Testament, including those promises that he made when he was walking with the disciples and the apostles saying that he was going to be resurrected in three days. But they saw Jesus and they still, we hear the words, incredulous with joy. Now, incredulous means you're unwilling. So you have an unwillingness of joy. So it's, you're torn. Your heart tells you, yes, this is Jesus here in our presence. But your mind is saying, ain't no way. Jesus, 
I saw him all bloody, and he was placed in that tomb. He's dead. And so they couldn't come to grips with that, and they struggled with it. And they continued to struggle with it. The gospel picks up today. This is the third appearance of Jesus on Easter Sunday, according to Luke's timeline. If you remember Easter Sunday, we hear about Mary and the other women going to the tomb, and Jesus appeared to them. So that was appearance number one. And then, a little later on, we hear about the two disciples going back on the road to Emmaus. And they were all distraught because this Jesus that they thought was going to be this wonderful Savior, he was crucified. Even though they heard that he rose from the dead from the women, they still didn't believe. So what happened? Jesus appeared to them, and their eyes were opened in the breaking of the bread. And then he disappeared, oof, almost like magic. But it wasn't magic. It was Jesus, the supernatural realm intersecting with the natural realm. And they were filled with this joy, and they ran back to Jerusalem. And that's where we pick up today. They're telling the other disciples what happened and what they saw. And then all of a sudden, Jesus, poof, just appears in their midst, almost like magic. But it wasn't magic. It was the supernatural realm intersecting with our natural world. And so they were still struggling to understand because they continued to see things through our finite, our limited, our physical eyes. And if we try to use that to understand these mysteries that the Catholic says, the mysteries of faith, we'll never come to understand and believe. We have to see with the eyes of faith. And as we hear in our gospel today, Jesus opened up their minds and their hearts so that they can understand Scripture. That is what we call supernatural grace. It's an infusion of this supernatural gift of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that can only come from God. I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but it's that instantaneous knowing and understanding, but yet you can't put it in words. Why not? Because words are limited and finite, and words cannot explain the supernatural, not adequately enough. They can come close, but we're always going to be left with this little bit, and that's where we have to surrender ourselves. God wants us to surrender and give ourselves and give us an intellectual assent and an assent of our will that we believe and we trust in what Jesus said and taught and what was passed on to us today through the apostles and through the Catholic Church. So let me ask you again. Do you believe that Jesus was resurrected from the grave? Yes. All right. Now, now that we got that article of faith out the way, there's one other thing that is super important in today's gospel that you may not have picked up on. Our gospel starts with the two disciples talking about how Jesus appeared to them in the breaking of the bread. So do you believe that Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist? Yes. Okay, that's not quite as good as that resurrection, but it's getting close. <laughs> so as stubborn human beings as we are, we might want to say, okay, that bread looks like bread. It smells like bread. It tastes like bread. It's got to be bread. Ain't no way it can be the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. In the same way that wine looks, smells, tastes like wine, ain't no way that that's Jesus. The intersection of the supernatural and our natural world happens right here on the altar. But 
if we want to try to prove that that bread and wine are or are not the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, then what are we going to do? Well, if you're familiar with the Eucharistic miracles, I don't remember exactly how many. Blessed Carlos Acutis uh, has a catalog that he started with all these miracles of the Eucharist that happened around the world over the centuries, including not too long ago when Pope Francis was actually bishop down in South America, wherever he was, Argentina, I can't remember. Um, but there's somewhere around 150. So what happens is we have evidence in episodes, times when the host started bleeding. And when they take that host and they look at that host under a microscope, these are scientists who did the research, they see tissue, human tissue, not bread. And they say it's actually heart tissue. Science has gotten so good that they can actually identify where the tissue comes from. So they say it's heart tissue. Then they can have some other miracles where there's blood that they look at and they look at the blood under the microscope and it's not like the blood you would see in somebody who's been dead. The blood is still looks like it's alive. That's a miracle. Miracles are supernatural. They can't be explained through our eyes and our human understanding. We need supernatural assistance. And so for those of us who aren't quite sure, it's so important. This is a central reason why we're here today, because Jesus said he would be with us. And he says, if we don't believe the evidence that we see looking under a microscope, I'd encourage you to read John chapter 6, not once, not twice, three times, and more. Look at it not from our human eyes, but from a supernatural eye, the eyes of faith. And if it's hard for us to believe, we need to pray for the Holy Spirit because that's what we had Jesus do, gave us this supernatural grace. Ask the Holy Spirit, help me, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Help me to really believe. Jesus was willing to let disciples walk away because they couldn't believe that he really said, this is my body, this is my blood. They couldn't get it, and so they left. It was hard for them to understand and comprehend. Jesus was okay with that, and he didn't say it was a symbol. The Eucharist is truly the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. So if John chapter 6 isn't enough, then, you know, there's several other situ episodes in the Scripture, but look at the Lord's Supper. He gave us the words of, of consecration. And he said, do this in memory of me. And that is why we get together today at Mass. Catholics come together because we celebrate God's presence in the Word. And I have to say, when I'm holding the book up, I actually look around. And I'm looking at everybody here to see who's looking, not at me, but looking at the book I'm holding up. Because that is the Word of God. That's God present in the words. So we need to be attentive to that. But when Father's up here, Jesus becomes present because the Holy Spirit, God uses Father as the instrument in persona Christi to say the words of consecration. And Father calls down the Holy Spirit to make that the body, blood, soul, and divinity. We have to understand with the eyes of faith and see that with the eyes of faith. And if we can, then when we come to Mass, our world is going to change because we're going to come with a reverence. If Jesus really glorified body, blood, soul, and divinity came and stood right here in front of us, what would you do? we'd all probably drop to our knees or run out the door thinking we can escape him and get out of it, but we would drop to our knees because that's God before us. 
and we'd start crying and praying and giving thanks. We'd fall prostrate maybe, lay out and ask for mercy and forgiveness. That is the same Jesus that's here on the altar and that's here in the tabernacle. So that's why it's important when we come into church to acknowledge that this is a place where God dwells. And we need to be respectful of those around us who are trying to pray in their privacy, in their quiet, and we need to come in with a quiet tone of reverence, not having a party and chatting, because if we are, we're not recognizing the presence of God before us. And that's why we kneel and we make the sign of the cross, so we can all be one in this Eucharist that comes before us. So if anybody does struggle still with the, the thought that this could be Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and still struggle with their belief and their faith in that, then it's important for you to talk to a deacon or a priest. I'd encourage you to go on form.org. I didn't, haven't seen it in the bulletin lately, but it's an app that's free for, in the diocese here. All you have to do, you have to go on your computer and you have to look up and register on your computer, then you could download the app on your smartphone. And there's all kind of information there you, about the Eucharist and any Catholic teaching. So I'd encourage you, if you are struggling with that, don't give up, keep on going, and, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to grow in your faith so that you can understand and truly believe and have that perfect faith where we give our assent intellectually, and the ascent of our will. God bless. Come. Dear brothers and sisters, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. With these beautiful words, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God was not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for us salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are gathered to celebrate the mystery of, our, of the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us ask God, our Father, to open this fountain of life and the blessing for all the world. After a prayerful pause, we will respond in faith saying, Lord, Hear our prayer. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all who lead us in faith. May our priests, Father Ken and Father Tomas, be given joy and integrity to teach all the work for justice. 
May they model prayer and service, the joy of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who have received Easter sacraments. May our new Christians discover their call toward lives of prayer and works of justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children who have been hurt by the hands of parents, teachers, and siblings. May we listen to the stories of our young people with concern and honesty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Let us pray for people who struggle to believe in themselves. May Easter bring us a clearer view of our own worth in Christ Jesus. May love be our food and kindness be our hope. Pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for our beloved dead. May Easter joy be made known in our friends who now see the face of Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves that all of us gathered at your table be able to live in accordance with the teachings of the apostles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, hear the prayers of your people. Give us what you have inspired us to ask for you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please join us in singing song number 167. Number 167, Two Were Bound for Emmaus. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O God, of all creation, for your goodness we have 
receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine will work with human hands and will become our spiritual tree. Blessed be God forever. With the Holy Spirit, contrite heart may be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given us her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commanding himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamp of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together and honor the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things that make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we looked forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Make he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and, and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion and merciful Father Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, Lord, your servants, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in the death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up the flesh those who have died and transform a lonely body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Interesting of the Behold the lamp of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the lamp. Przyszedł do mnie, ale powiedz tylko słowo, a będzie uzdrowiona dusza moja. Ciało Chrystusa niech mnie strzeże na życie wieczne. Amen. Krew Chrystusa niech mnie strzeże na życie wieczne. Amen.
please join in singing number 355, number 355, In the Breaking of the Bread.
We have some announcements. So, as you know, time runs very fast. I came to Hattiesburg actually three years ago as a deacon. I was ordained in January 22nd, 2022, and uh, Bishop Kineman now is moving me to another parish. It's not far from here. It's gonna be in Loro, Immaculate Conception. Uh, I have to start my assignment over there in August 19th, so we have still some time with each other to pray for each other. Uh, I'm gonna go home for four weeks uh, in the first week of July, and then I'm coming back in uh, August 7. So after that, we are gonna still be one week together, uh, and then I have to move. So I'm gonna visit you very often, as Father Alwin visit, is visiting you. Also, I'm planning to a, I'm planning to a trip, kind of a pilgrimage to Poland in October. So if you have nothing to do in October, you can go with me to Poland. You can try the food I eat at home. You can see my home and go to places where nobody went yet. Uh, I promise I'm not gonna speak Polish to you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. Thanks be to God. Please join in our sending forth hymn number 187, number 187, Christ the Lord is risen today. <laughs> 